Who does YouTube ads work for? Why is audio quality so much more important on YouTube than it is on Facebook video ads? And how do you combine direct response and branding messages into one video ad? You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this Marketing Focus podcast. If you're not familiar with our format, each month we focus on a different marketing method like email or SEO or Facebook ads. And each week I interview a different marketing method expert to explore the latest advice on making that marketing method work for you. This month, we're totally ignoring our normal format and have bought you a selection of brand new things you could slide into your marketing plans for the end of the year. So to wrap up this month of newness, we are shining a light on YouTube ads. It's a topic I've wanted to cover for a while, but it's taken some time to find a guest who's good enough at it to bring them on to tell you all what to do. So stay tuned to find out the ins and outs of YouTube ads, who they work for, how to make them work for you and the key things you need to know to decide if they're part of your strategy for this year or for next year and how to get started. And we're even going to be sharing how you can do the whole thing in-house. We're going to meet today's guest expert in a second, but before we do, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Klaviyo, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for brands of all kinds and sizes. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or you're part of a marketing team at a multinational brand, Klaviyo will give you everything you need to create memorable marketing moments, building customer relationships that keep shoppers coming back time and time again. Get started with a free account today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash master plan. Today, I'm chatting with YouTube ads expert, Shash Singh. Shash is the founder of paid traffic agency, Lynx Digital. Via Lynx, he and his team have spent the last six years helping e-commerce brands find high ROI ad strategies, pivoting from platform to platform and strategy to strategy to find the best results. Hello, Shash. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. It's Great to have you here. We're covering a topic I have wanted to understand in more detail for a long time. So I'm really excited to kind of reveal all to our audience. So how how did you get into YouTube ads? Because it seems to me like they've been around for about a decade, but they're kind of newly interesting, I suppose. So how did you end up involved with them? Yeah, so basically I had a friend of mine who wanted to try out YouTube ads for his fitness brand. So he sells fitness courses, fitness supplements, products, etc. And we tried out YouTube ads based on one of his uh, videos, which and the video just went really viral with the YouTube ads. We were spending $5,000 a day, making ten dollars to $15,000 a day back. And that was really my first try at paid traffic. So it was literally a situation of hey, I want to try these YouTube ads. You look like you're a smart guy. Do you want to try them for me? And I kind of stumbled into it with that. And that brand was Kino Body, which is a pretty well-known fitness brand in the, you know, um, men's kind of fitness space. Nice. It's always nice to have a friend like that who goes, I've got this idea. Do you want to run with it and then create a business? (laughs) It's like, yeah, I'll do that. (laughs) So, uh, So that first one worked well. And then you thought this is something we could do for other people and and other brands too. Absolutely. So I started out initially working with a lot of course sellers as well as some lead generation uh, gaming as well. But essentially where things really started taking off was the last few years where we started doing a lot of info products and also e-commerce. So a lot of direct to consumer brands. And we have also worked with a lot of our um kind of people who've taken our advice and scaled their e-commerce brands with them as well. So we've seen both clients we've worked with directly as well as people who've, you know, been in our coaching program and the clients they're working with. So we kind of had that osmosis of data to figure out, okay, this is what works and this is what doesn't work with YouTube ads for e-commerce. Nice. So talking about what works and what doesn't, I'm going to assume that YouTube ads aren't necessarily for everyone. So who, what sort of businesses and brands do YouTube ads work best for? 
Absolutely. So if you're just starting out and you're a smaller brand, I think in many cases, Facebook ads can be a better traffic source to start out with just because of the fact that you don't need to necessarily go video heavy from the get go. You can use images. But as you start scaling up, let's say you're doing $50,000 a month to $75,000 a month and you want to try doing more video, that's where YouTube starts being really powerful, right? Because it is a platform that is a little bit tougher initially to figure out than Facebook ads, but then the scalability is huge, right? The great thing about YouTube ads is you can spend very, very high amounts of money on there because it's a, it's the world's second biggest search engine, right? And people spend huge amounts of time on there and they're also in education and learning mode in many cases. So you're really able to kind of scale up your offers and your products to very high levels, but it is a little harder to get started. And the other piece of the puzzle is you do need a product that's higher priced. So something that's perhaps I would say, if you're okay with spending 40 to $45 to acquire a new customer, then that product would work with YouTube ads. Now, obviously, if you're selling $25 jewelry, you're not going to want to spend $45 to acquire a customer, and that's probably not going to work. On the other hand, if you have, let's say, some sort of product that's around $80 to $90, it's very easily demonstrable by video. You can do well with YouTube ads. And a recent example of this was uh, this ad I saw for a pillow. It was like the pillow cube. So basically, it's an ergonomic pillow. And I think their AOV average order value was probably around the $80, $75 mark. And they were doing extremely well with YouTube ads. So a lot of these products where you can show them visually, so it's something that it's easy for people to understand through video, are what will do well with YouTube ads. And if they have a high enough average order value, or if you're able to spend at least $40 to $45 to acquire a customer, then you're usually in that sweet spot where YouTube ads ends up being extremely uh, promising and something you can really scale on. Nice rundown. I like that. A lot of really clear criteria, which uh, which hopefully has not led to anyone just turning off. <laughs> because even if you're not in those brackets, of course, you want to understand a bit more about this. So you can 100% understand whether it's for you or not or for future projects. You mentioned a couple of times in there about the, the fact, you know, people are on YouTube to be educated and about products that you can explain via video. So is it, this isn't, um, we're talking about videos that aren't like I don't know, a perfume ad that you see on the telly that's all pretty pictures and flowing robes. These are uh, kind of almost infomercials that we're looking to create to run as our ads. Absolutely. So really infomercials were the original YouTube ads, right? They are very direct to the point and their goal is to get you to buy right there. It's not a branding ad from Nike or Coca-Cola. If you're a huge company, yeah, you do branding ads. But if you're really a smaller business, what you want to do is focus on ads that get people to take action. But then those ads also will build fans and get people interested in your brand. So some people might buy right now, but then a lot of people will start kind of learning about your brand and also being interested. But what you're doing is you're combining direct response with branding because a really good YouTube ad does both, right? Because you're not going to have an ad that is uninteresting and boring and have it convert well, right? An ad that does well is going to be something people will enjoy watching, and that's why they're more likely to buy, but then it's also gonna hit the branding side of things because now they're kind of, you know, they're aware of your brand even if they haven't bought out at that moment. So to give you an example, um, what we did for one of our clients, Indestructible Shoes, is we created an ad where basically we, these shoes are shoes that you can put through a lot of abuse, right? So they have ads with people dropping hammers on them, um, you know, people stepping on nails, et cetera. So we hired a video agency to create an ad where essentially what we did is the hook of the ad, the initial five seconds, we drop and hammer, right, on the guy's shoe. And you you look at it, you're like, oh, that's got to hurt. But actually, <laughs> the hammer's dropped and he just smiles at you and kind of says the hook statement, which is, hey, are you tired of work shoes that look ugly? Do you, you know, why is it so hard to find those, right? So, and then from there, the ad is very interesting because not only do they explain the benefits of the ads uh, of the product and it's kind of funny, but it's also something where it demonstrates visually the shoe going through various forms of abuse with a, you know, person wearing it. And basically showcasing that, hey, this product works. So you kind of want to make sure you're showing people how something works while also being funny and thinking of it as like a funny infomercial. That's the way you would want to do it. 
You mentioned how YouTube is the world's second biggest search engine. So you've got people on there actively looking for content about certain things, which is very different from Facebook, where people are on there hanging out, chatting with people, but they're not searching. So any ads on Facebook are actively trying to interrupt what someone's already doing. Whereas on YouTube, you're not entirely interrupting them because YouTube's forcing them to watch some of their ad. So they're a captive audience. But you've then got to kind of ape or copy the type of content they might be looking at on YouTube. So it's it's quite it's not quite interruption marketing, but it's kind of like kind of is interruption marketing. Yeah, YouTube is basically it's both interruption, but also not interruption because you you could literally target somebody who's watching videos about surfing and then sell sell them a surfboard so in a way you are interrupting them a little bit but you're really giving them something they're already interested in right so um the format of the ad is more of interruption because it just shows up in front of the video you're about to watch but then the content the contextual targeting allows it to be a lot more targeted so what i like to say about youtube ads it's a mix of both intent based and contextual advertising so facebook is a contextual advertising platform right it's like uses kind of data about the user to figure out okay this person is interested in this so they could be scrolling through the news feed looking at cat photos or their you know married friends wedding photos and they'll see an ad for a product and basically they'll be they'll be the type of person that's interested in that product, but they won't be thinking about that product while they're doing that. So on YouTube, you can do that, right? So you can target somebody who's interested in something while they're watching a video about something like video games, right? And then you can show them a video about surfing because you know that they were, uh, they're interested in surfing. However, you can also show people who are watching videos about surfing and add for a surfing surfboard, right? So it's like both intent based and contextual. And then the, other piece of the puzzle that's really, really cool is not only is YouTube the world's second largest search engine, so you have all that data that you can just use and target people based on the behavior they have and also the interest they have. You also have access to Google search engines data, right? So if somebody goes onto Google.com and they search, uh, let's say, flower pots, right? They want to buy flower pots. So they go onto Google.com and they search up flower pots. You could on YouTube as an advertiser target people who are searching flower pots for sale as a keyword in Google.com. So you can use the power of both Google.com and for YouTube. And that's where the scale really is at at because it's, it's not just, you know, one network. It's literally Google's cross, uh, network power that you're utilizing. Very nice. Now, something we we slightly brushed over because I got excited about the role of the ads um, was the actual video production. And something which we've seen on the Instagram and the Facebook side of things is kind of the rallying call is don't worry too much about production quality. You know, just you just need to tell the story and the production quality is not that important. I get the impression on YouTube that we're talking production quality wise more like a TV ad than like the founder wandering around the warehouse? Well, it can be both, right? So you can do those kind of ads, which are, you know, much more low key. But when I talk about production, what I want to avoid is people basically going and taking like slideshow ads, right? Like basically a bunch of slides that they put on Facebook and it worked and using them on YouTube. You need to have a certain base level of production, right? So you want to make sure there's some level of production. You don't need TV quality. You don't need to have it being produced in by a big agency. You could literally have a selfie video with your iPhone and turn that into an ad that sells millions of dollars. However, you do want to make sure that, okay, you're shooting it in uh, basically a horizontal format because especially on YouTube desktop, a lot of people are, um, if they see an ad that has like ad, you know, bars on the side, it just looks a little weird. So you want to make sure you're you know, adjusting to the format, you also want to make sure you're adjusting to the content quality, right? So people on YouTube either expect to hear a voiceover or somebody to be actually in the video, right? So on Facebook, a lot of times you're scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and things are auto muted by default, right? So you really kind of look at the visuals and text on screen. So you, those are kind of the two cues you use. On YouTube, on the other hand, 
what you're going to be doing a lot of times is you click on a video, audio instantly plays, right? Unless you have it muted, audio almost always plays. So if you see a YouTube ad and there's no audio and it's just, let's say, some text on the screen with some images or, you know, little video clips, it's not really going to hook you in. You're expecting somebody to take you through this ad, right? Somebody to take you through this journey of basically consuming this ad and buying this product. And because of that, either having a voiceover is really useful or having an actual live actor in the video, right? So if you're selling an e-commerce product, a really easy way to get started with ads is combine a lot of product footage with B-roll footage and a voiceover artist. And with those three elements, you can make an ad that basically uh, persuades people to actually purchase and it fits the YouTube format because that's uh, how a lot of YouTube videos are made. They're made with uh, voiceovers, with video footage, right? So a lot of these YouTubers, they don't even show themselves on the camera. They will literally either have animation on the screen or they'll use B-roll and then go through the whole story and basically, you know, be a storyteller. So that's something that's really important to keep in mind with YouTube ads. And with that, you can create an ad for a couple hundred dollars that actually does well. And then if you want to start going up and hire an agency, yeah, you're going to spend a few thousand dollars, but then that's that's more for scaling. Do test it. You don't need to go create a high production ad. Cool. A well, quick question on that. You said bureau footage. I'm guessing that's what we might call stock footage that you just buy some footage of a forest or something that we slot in. Would that be right? Yeah. B-roll footage. And there are websites like envato.com and others where you can basically subscribe and have access to huge amounts of footage. So if you're considering doing YouTube ads, a really good uh, asset to have is just a good video editor. Because if you try to edit these videos yourself, it's just going to take forever. So hire a good video editor and you can work with them to carry out the vision of what the ad looks like. Nice. And and what's our aim with the video? Because you've just given us a really good guide as to how we can produce them at a cost effective way. But um, you know, you said earlier about the shoes with the hammer falling on it to quickly position that product benefit and hook people in. Because I'm assuming we need to have quite a good kind of story arc, I suppose, on these videos. Because, you know, I'm sure all of us have been on YouTube and you you just hover over waiting to click skip ad the second you can as a consumer. So presumably we need to hook people quickly. And our first aim is to stop them from hitting click ad or skip ad rather. So then we we kind of sell later. Would that be kind of a typical content flow? So essentially, the most important piece of the puzzle is initially to hook their attention and basically grab them by the throat so they watch the rest of the ad because the first few seconds are the most important, right? If they don't like that, they're going to skip and they're probably not going to be interested. So that's where in the first five seconds, you want to think of either a controversial statement or a visual scene or something that when they hear and see it, they are interested in watching more of the video. It opens an open loop in their mind. So let's do an example of this, right? So a really good hook, for example, if you're selling an e-commerce marketing product, is something like this. Did you know that the top 5% of Amazon sellers typically do this one tactic, they use this one strategy that 95% of Amazon sellers don't even know about. And because of this, they're able to scale their business three times faster, right? So you're creating, you're using a statement that's a little bit controversial because it's like, hey, what is this crazy tactic or strategy that nobody is telling me about? Right. And why are, is it that only 5% of Amazon sellers know about it? And what is it that makes them have so much more success? Right. So essentially anything that can create a lot of curiosity in the first five seconds and really get them to s- stop going through their day and open an open loop in their brain, that's going to work as a good hook. Nice. I, I like that example. I think that will resonate with a lot of people and half the audience probably going, what is the one tactic? Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, it's that grabbing someone's attention with all those great skills we can learn in copywriting courses and all the rest of it, hook them in so they watch the rest of the ad. And then do we then have things we can add to the video to click them straight through to our website to buy? Is there a call to action mechanism built in? Absolutely. So you you do have basically call to actions. So the way I structure the ad is I'll have the hook Right. And then from there, I want to keep building curiosity and interest. So I'm going to keep developing whatever argument I had. So, for example, if it's the one strategy I 
slowly get into, okay, this strategy isn't, let's say, Amazon PPC. The strategy isn't Messenger. The strategy isn't all the common things they expect it to be. But in reality, it's actually a little underknown tactic that was developed in China in the 1500s, right? Like essentially you make it sound mysterious and interesting. You build up curiosity even more and more, and then you kind of pitch them what you have, which is, hey, so I created a free training, a free webinar where we go into advanced Amazon strategy that has helped a lot of our clients and the biggest Amazon sellers scale two to three X faster, right? Obviously at a certain point, you'll probably want to reveal what the strategy is. And so it makes sense that, you know, they, they're like, okay, this is legitimate and this makes sense. So once you get to that point and you actually introduce what your free offer is, right? So you've built up a lot of curiosity, you've opened an open hook in their brain, and now you're telling them, hey, so this is free training. I'm going to actually show you how to implement this strategy. Let's say, call it the three-click strategy, right? Again, I'm completely making this up. This is <laughs> off the fly. Um, obviously, you will do this based on something that's real. So the three-click strategy that we developed. And you tell them that, hey, click the link above or below to go to this free training, and then they'll go sign up for that, right? After that, you can have a phase where you, you show them some social proof, so results of other students, maybe build some authority and credibility, talk about magazines you've been in. So essentially, every line in the ad, is it has a purpose, right? It's either grabbing their attention, it's building curiosity and interest, it's telling them what to do, or it's showing them that you're legitimate, you're getting good results. It, it might be perhaps that you're teaching them some something. So sometimes in an ad, you may want to give them a couple of different tips, especially if you're in a niche where everybody pitches and nobody teaches. So if you can teach them like something really cool in the ad, that's something you can do. It's not required. And then there's other things you can do as well, such as, let's say, showing transformations of students, right? So we've had this person who went through this free training and they he got this result. Now, the example I gave you is for a course, but you can easily modify this for an e-commerce product where perhaps instead of showing as much, building as much curiosity about the mechanism, you'd focus a bit more on the product, right? And you would focus more on what the product does and what the secret sauce is that makes this product works, right? So it would be a little bit more demonstration with an e-commerce product. And but definitely keeping in that social proof element, you know, to show other customers have loved this product too and this is how they've used it and and it, and so on and so forth. I can really see how that's going to work for, you know, the higher price point products where you have to do that little bit more selling anyway. So um so Shash that is absolutely spot on. I mean we've talked about the the simplest way of creating these videos where clearly we need to spend far more time on scripting and storyboarding, as it were, than we spend necessarily on actually videoing it. But is this something it's feasible for someone to do in-house? Yeah, I mean, it definitely is feasible. It is a lot more work, but you can definitely learn to do it. So it kind of depends on what your strengths are, right? Like different business owners have different strengths. So if you're really creative and you're really good at coming up with shooting ads and ideas for that, yeah, this is absolutely something that you could figure out on your own in the creative side, right? Maybe on the ad management side, it's probably something you may want to hire out. But I've seen a lot of founders who are really creative and they're able to make some great ads because they just know what their audience likes and they they really enjoy doing that. Now, on the other hand, if you're like super logistics focused and you're the guy who's really amazing at supply chains and the financial math and so on, then perhaps this may not be the best use of your time to go in and script a video ad like that. So in that case, you may want to start looking at external resources like copywriters or video production agencies. Nice answer. Well, look, um, look, Shash, we're going to pause now for a reminder of our sponsors, and then we're going to talk even more about YouTube ads. Success in 2021 means building stronger relationships with your customers. Last year saw a lot of consumers switching to buy online, leading to surges in new customer acquisition. So how are you planning on turning your new first-time buyers into profitable repeat customers? Well, that's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo helps businesses create memorable marketing moments through email, SMS and personalised website experiences. And that is what creates repeat purchases. That's why Klaviyo, the ultimate e-commerce marketing 
platform is used by over 50,000 e-commerce brands around the world. Get started with your free account today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Okay, Shash, so far we have gone deep into YouTube ads and now we're going to go even deeper. Um, Are you ready to share your insider tips? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Let's start with YouTube ads newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take that first step with YouTube ads, what is the most important thing they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? So as I said, the biggest thing you got to do with the YouTube ads is make sure you're kind of ready for it. So my recommendation is unless you really love video advertising and you've had experience with video ads, wait till you're doing 50 to $75,000 a month with your business because it's going to require a little bit of testing. From based on my experience, that's probably the point where business owners really can figure out YouTube pretty fast versus when you're at 20,000 a month and you know you spend $3,000 on video ads and they don't work. It it can be extremely stressful. So first thing, 50 to 75k a month. Second thing is you should really really focus in on the creative. So Instead of worrying about the ad targeting or, you know, how to basically optimize the ads, your 90% of your attention when you're running YouTube ads for e-commerce should be on the video ad. So really take your time with it. Look at what's working on the marketplace. I use this tool called vidtow.com. It's a completely free tool you can sign up for. And basically you search competitors in there and their ads show up. So vidtao.com, I'll send a link over. And you want to just do your research shoot an amazing ad. That's the main thing you want to do. 90% of the effort there because that leads to all the results, right? You don't want to focus on just trying to nerd out over target CPA or max conversions because those are those are important. But really what I've seen as a huge mistake amongst advertisers is they just overvalue like all these little tips and tricks in the ad platform and they don't get the ad creative right. So that's my suggestion right there. And yeah, that's, uh, that's what I would do if I was, uh, if I was new to YouTube ads. I love that. Yeah. I can see someone, someone creating a terrible ad and then spending months trying to make it work by tweaking the selections and the bids and all the rest. It's like, get, get that ad, ad right. Okay. Once we've got started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve YouTube ads performance? So my favorite way to improve YouTube ads performance is number one, test new variations of your winning creative. So whatever video ad is working well, try to make edits to that, make a shorter version, edit in a longer version, try creating a different version where you change out the first 10 to 15 seconds. So you try out different hooks. So that's going to have a big result on your performance. A second tip is I would highly suggest using target CPA bidding that's usually what's going to get you the best results. So there's like different bidding types in YouTube ads. What you want to be focused in on is maximize conversions when you start out. And once you have 100 plus conversions, 200 conversions in your ad account, start trying target CPA. Long term, that's the type of bidding that has worked really, really well for us and helped us scale significantly. And third tip for improving your YouTube ads ROI is really ensure that you have your whole tracking set up in a very clean manner. So I like to send my traffic to a unique page. So if I'm sending Facebook traffic and YouTube traffic to my website, I usually have different funnels for them, right? Or different product pages. And that way you really are able to see, okay, this is kind of the real ROI because sometimes ad platforms can underreport, especially after iOS 14. Um, as you start scaling things up, that's where you may start looking at third-party tracking tools to improve your tracking accuracy. But I would just keep things separate between different traffic sources, right? Don't send them all to the same page because that's just going to result in you being like, so what ad platform is working for me? I have no idea, right? I really love that as well, because if if you found on YouTube that one particular hook works and then you can reiterate that on your YouTube specific landing page, then you can only manage to increase the conversion rate. So so I, I love, love that idea. Um, okay. If someone listening wants to learn more about YouTube ads, is there a cheap or free re- resource even that you would recommend? So absolutely. One resource I would recommend is my YouTube channel. So it's S-H-A-S-H and then S-I-N-G-H. I have just tons of videos on there on everything 
And I have one video that's on how to scale e-commerce YouTube ads for $25,000 a day. That's like a good introductory 30 minute video. You know, it shows you how to set up your first campaign, how to script your ad. So it allows you to go in deeper. So that would definitely be where I would start. Nice. We will add a link to your channel and to that specific video to the show notes, everyone, in details, more details of that coming up later. Uh, okay. Finally, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for with YouTube ads? Absolutely. So one of the things that's happening in the industry right now is that tracking is basically changing quite a bit, right? So with iOS, even with Basically, Google, they're seeing a lot of effects of that, right? So one of the big trends I've seen is advertisers that are smaller, that had weaker offers and weaker ads, they're getting pushed out right now, right? Because it's, uh, quite frankly, the ad platforms are not as efficient at just pinpointing the exact person as they used to be. Now, hopefully, they'll come up with solutions to improve upon that. But I do think this is going to be a long-term thing where the really the big movers are you need an offer or a product that people really, really want and an ad and a creative that is just really top notch, right? So I think we're going to see more and more lower end advertisers who are kind of, you know, they sell decent products and they have decent ads get pushed out of the market. And it's going to become more of a winner takes all marketplace, right? Where the bigger advertisers who are more experienced with copywriting, with uh, traffic, they're going to do better and better. So it's not a bad thing. It just means you just have to be better and you'll be able to take advantage of this because quite frankly, with with a lot of the advertising I've seen over the last three or four years, there was a period of time where you could be very mediocre and get good results with ads because of a confluence of different factors and that's ending. So this is the time to really just make sure your market message is clear and that your advertising creatives are excellent. I think at long term, what's going to happen with these advertising algorithms is they're going to give you less and less control. And we're already seeing that with Google, right? Like with YouTube ads, they're basically taking away options that you used to have to further target people. And the algorithm is going to do more and more of the work. So what that's telling me is your job as the business owner or as the advertiser is to make really amazing ads, have a really amazing offer and a very clear message, right? Like whatever your offer is, whatever your ad is, there has to be a great market message fit. And it's essentially marketing 101, right? So we had this whole period where everything was about the tactics. And now it's just going to go back to the fundamentals over the next five to 10 years. Ah, oh, I love that piece of advice. And I and it really does reiterate on everything we've been talking about, how you've got to get that creative right if you want to perform on a creative platform like like YouTube. Um, Shash, thank you so much for all your advice. Uh, it's been an excellent episode. And I know everyone's going to get loads of, loads of good ideas from this. As we are very nearly at the end of the show, though, can you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business if they want to come to you for some help with all of this? Absolutely. So our website is linksdigitalagency.com, L-I-N-X-D-I-G-I-T-A-L agency.com. And we also have a quiz on there. I think we can throw in a link on there. Uh, And it's basically, are you ready for YouTube ads? And it tells you if you're ready for YouTube ads. And if you're not, what you need to do to become ready to be able to scale on YouTube. So that would be a cool little resource as well for those of you who are on the fence of whether YouTube is going to work for you or not. Yeah, it's a really, and it, for those of you who are, who still have create quiz for website on your to-do list, um, is also a really great example of how a quiz can, uh, can really help the business too. Um, so Shash, thank you so much for being on the Keep Optimizing podcast today. It has been excellent finding out the ins and outs of YouTube ads. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing your expertise. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Wow, what what a masterclass there. Um, if anyone's in any, any doubt about what the key things you need to get right to succeed with YouTube ads, you shouldn't be in any doubt about that anymore. For those of you who have gone, wow, this is a channel we need to give a go to, good luck with it. Um, let me know how you get on. I'd be really interested to hear. For those of you who've gone, oh, this isn't for us right yet, right now, that's cool put it to the side, focus on something else for the next couple of months. But you now know the ins and outs of what to do if you want to take that step with YouTube ads, plus quite a few interesting tips around advertising in general there too. Now you can get links to all those bits and pieces we discussed there with Shash by heading to 
keepoptimizing.com. Go to all episodes and you'll find this one listed. And on that page, you will also find the full transcript of the episode, our notes on the episode, and a few other bits and pieces too. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. Our whole set of episodes about our new, new marketing methods are now live. So please do dive into them all so you can decide which ones are for you and not for you in the coming months. And make sure you tune in next Wednesday when we're going to be starting our series of four shows about organic social media. Yes, not the paid type, the free stuff. So if you know someone who's particularly interested in improving their organic social media performance, better engagement, growing their Instagram channel, making it all work more efficiently, then please do let them know that we're going to be covering it because this show exists to help all e-commerce marketers improve their marketing. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything, keep optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z.